I'm just picking some situations here. So I can show to you what you can do if you want to apply this. One line of action you need, if you want to do the translation, you need to understand in what height you're going to do this. So we're focusing now on individual movements. Let's see one situation in, a, in which I want to close the space, like uh, in the remaining space of first lower molar losses. It's very common in Brazil. I, I bet in your country is also very common. So what we do for that? First of all, again, the periodontal status is important. So before doing the closing the gap, closing the space, I deal with the slow extrusion. So I make the bone follow the movement. So I make the bone follow the movement and then I go very slowly in the uh, mesial direction or distal direction, whatever is what I planned for. So first of all, uprighting the molar. How is the right way to upright the molar? There are several ways. I'm not focusing on that now. I usually use cantilevers or uh, two couple system, alpha and beta uh, hook, a loop for that. So depending on what I want. I want extrusion, I want just uprighting with the center of rotation at the center of resistance. What do I want? You see guys, guys, how important it is to understand biomechanics because you can do everything you want in biomechanics. Of course, it's not like uh, rocket science. It's not something that you take for granted. I do the calculation and everything is going the right way. It's not like that. Believe me, it's not like that. But we need to start at the right, at the right point. And then we focus in the right biomechanics. And we try to apply the right biomechanics at the whole movement, during the whole movement. And of course, we adjust. We adjust. Because the variables are enormous. We have several variables that we can't control. The height, the bone height, the root shape, the crown shape, and everything must be adjusted because of this huge amount, magnet, huge amount of variables that we have in orthodontics. I see some professors doing like this. We need to do the calculation of everything and we need in a two-couple system, uh, statically indeterminate system, statically indeterminate system, we need to calculate everything and statically determinate system, the same thing. We are starting at the right point, yes, but we can't control all the variables. It's not with us. It's not with us, okay? But again, let's move to the right, <laughs> to the right uh, planning for this. What I want here, uprighting the molar. First of all, uprighting the molar. And when I do that in a healthy environment, meaning I have uh, in this patient, a healthy periodontal uh, apparatus, this is going to take place. Slow extrusion will make the bone follow the movement because the stretching of the periodontal fibers. And since we have, we don't have inflammation there at this moment, we are going to have a good movement of the bone following the movement of the root. So this is what we want. And when we have it, oh, something happened here. And when we have it, uh, now we are going to close the gap. What if I want to apply one line of action of the bones? We need to know where the center of resistance of one molar, two molars, or uh, a set of teeth where those center of resistance are located. And we have articles for that, okay? At the end of this presentation, we'll have some, you will have a QR code for, so you can uh, photograph and have some articles in which this lesson, this course, this part of the course is based, okay? So now, from now on, I'm doing the movement. After a while, I'm doing the movement to close the gap. If I'm using one line of action of the force, I want that line of action of the force in the lower arch to be at the height of the center of resistance, which is located between the molar roots, one millimeter apical to the furcation. And this is what I'm aiming for. This is what I'm looking for, to pass the force at that height. 
So let's see something. Of course, it's not that easy because sometimes when you do a very high hook, in this case, this hook is welded to the molar. Of course, before bonding the tube, I welded this hook to the molar. And then I'm doing the movement to close the space using one line of action of the force. Okay. And we'll have some examples when I use one line of action plus one moment. Okay. So the moment to force ratio is very important in biomechanics. Of course, it's impossible for us to uh, give the a thorough class, a thorough information about this, but I'm going to show to you how we can control this. Here it is. Uh, what you're seeing here is at some point I'm doing the grinding of the wire. This is a 1925 uh, uh, stainless steel grinded in the posterior segment. So I decrease the friction, okay? And I'm applying the force at this height, closer to the center of resistance. And as you can see, we managed to close the gap, to close the remaining space. Okay, here it is. So do it. first of all, upright in molar, so we can follow. See here, let me show it again. What I wanted here was to give to the molar this uprighting position, so the bone will follow, would follow the movement. And as you can see, the bone followed the movement. Here it is. And then we are closing the space. Look at this. The line of action of the force is very close to the center of resistance of this tube. What is important here? Critical tip. Don't do the activation plus activation and plus activation. Let the movement be slow. And why I'm doing this? First, one molar, then the other one, because I try to do that several times using both molars doing this at the same time, but it won't work properly. Most of the cases, it won't work properly. It will be very difficult for you to do that. So I do first molar, first one molar, in this case, the second molar. And in the majority of the cases, the last molar, in this case, the third molar, will follow the movement by the action of the trans fiber, the, the trans uh, fiber <clears throat> trans transeptal fibers. I, I lost the, the English name for that. The transeptal fibers, okay? So they are stretched and pulling together with the, mold, the, the second molar, the third molar, and uh, measurely, okay? So this is what we are going to see. And after a while, what's going on here? After a while, if the second molar, the last molar, won't follow the movement, we can help, okay? But in this case, as you can see, most of the movement was natural. Well, you are seeing now one view. And if I'm applying again, remember, three topics. I'm just look, uh, looking for the one line of action here. And I'm applying the line of action of the force, trying to close the gap, trying to close the space with a translatory movement of the molar I'm applying the force at the, head, the height of the center of resistance. But I'm seeing just the lateral view of it. You need to see the center of resistance as a tridimensional structure. So for a multi-rooted tooth, the center of resistance is likely between the roots one or two millimeters apical to the fruitation. But again, think of the center of resistance as a point that needs to be evaluated or assessed three-dimensionally. Three-dimensionally, meaning occlusal view, first order, lateral view, second order, or inclination, third order. So everything must be considered. And let's move back to that uh, concept that we used before. This is the same thing for uni-rooted teeth, okay? single rooted teeth, uh, same thing, but look at this. If I don't want, and I don't want, in the most of in the majority of the cases, the rotation of the molar during this movement, I need to apply, if I'm applying one line of action, buckle and 
lingual. I'm controlling the angulation with the, the lower position of the hook and controlling the rotation with this second uh, force here. So I'm using just one line of action. Of course, this force here is being applied at the level of the crown and is generating uh, inclination, meaning in the lateral view, it would be the angulation of the crown, but again, again, we need to adjust, we need to adjust. Let's see, uh, regarding the rotation, what's going on? You see here, closing the gap. Okay, let's move it back. Closing the gap, closing the gap, and closing the gap. You see it? So we managed to have a good movement just using the concept of one line of action. And why uh, Kleber is always talking about one line of action? Because we can use one line of action plus um, a moment, but not in this type of biomechanics. This is the simplest way to deal with it. Simplest way to deal with a simple biomechanics, okay? Clinical biomechanics, let's say. Here it is, before and after, occlusal view, a lateral view, and the radiographic uh, assessment of this.